Good morning. It's Saturday and it's six in the morning and today's setting is a bit different because we're in front of the machine shop in which we'll continue our project of making our OpenSense router that I started a couple of weeks ago. Now I should apologize for not posting a new video every week and there's a good reason for that. In fact there are two reasons. Uh, first I've been very busy with production of the website for my keyboards which you can check in the description down below and secondly a lot of effort went into what you're gonna see today. Uh, we had to do a lot of back and forth of coordination when it comes to the actual production of the router and you'll see the details of that in this video. Uh, there's a lot of let's say boring or unvideoable stuff that goes into this project or process and yeah we're gonna talk about it once we get inside so let's do it. The first thing we're gonna do is take this piece of aluminum and make the base plate on which we will mount our motherboard. This is a fairly simple piece, however, it does come with a drawback. It's very thin, which means we're gonna have to use vacuum in order to mill it properly and I'll show you how it's done. Before we can do anything with our block of aluminum, we need to align the machine's coordinate system with the dimensions of the block. Once that is done, we mount the block onto the machine and turn on the vacuum which will hold it in place while milling. While prototyping, we use smaller milling bits and move them slower than in a full production run. This helps us notice any kind of flaws in the path of the bit and allows us to stop it in case it would attempt to make any kind of movement that could break it, the machine or damage the block. Remember, the CNC machine doesn't have eyes, ears or intuition, it just does what we program it to do and despite many safeguards, we can still make a mistake in the code and make it do something that could damage it. And in a machine of this class, damages are measured in tens of thousands of dollars. In a production run, these things will have been of course optimized, so bigger bits are used that can remove more material in a single pass. Since the CNC work is usually priced by machining time, we want to get the milling done as fast as possible while still ensuring proper tolerances and safety of the machine and its parts. In this section, we're milling the top side of the base plate on which the Mini ITX motherboard will be mounted. The bottom part was already milled on another 3-axis CNC machine at this point, but we could not record it because that machine does not have a window to record through. The base plate is now complete, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna test our mini, mini, <laughs> mini ITX motherboard and see whether, well, I screwed anything up when designing this base plate. So let's do it. Everything seems to fit perfectly, so I'd call this a success. Uh, this is not a final piece yet because it still needs to be anodized and the feet are missing. Uh, so yeah, let's continue on with the I.O. shield. First half of the I.O. shield is now done. Now with any product that's being CNC milled, it's usually done in two major steps. In the first step, you take away the material from one side as much as you can and then what you usually have to do is take the part out turn it around and run the program in order to get the rest of the aluminum away. So, first half done, second half, let's do it. Our I.O. shield is now complete. I've already mounted two buttons which are temporary. Well, I will mount them and I will connect them to the motherboard, uh, but in the long run, I think I'm gonna, not I think, I'm planning to do like a membrane-based small keyboard, if you will, uh, on the back of the I.O. shield. So, let's mount it now on the base plate. Yeah. 
this is how the final IO shield looks in place. Uh, what I need to also do is mount the power cable or the power connector in which the power brick will be connected to, which is this one. And then what we need to do is get our final piece done and that is the cover which is also the most complex piece of them all so it will take a while to do so let's begin much like with the base plate we need to let the machine know the dimensions of the raw block that we mount in it the pink probe is a highly sensitive device accurate down to a micrometer which is one one thousandth of a millimeter but before we can start cutting any piece, we need a way to mount the block onto the machine. In our case, we made two clamping edges by cutting away some aluminum on two sides and we also simulated the process in software. The liquid you see pouring onto the milling bit is called emulsion and it serves two purposes. First, it's a coolant so that the bit doesn't overheat, which would drastically change its cutting properties, and second, as a lubricant, which reduces wear of the cutting tool and lowers energy consumption of the machining process. This liquid is gathered on the bottom of the machine, filtered and sent back into the reservoir, from which the pump pulls it back into the milling bit again. The bit that cuts out the majority of the cover is also fairly small and with each pass cuts a small amount of aluminum. This is changed once the part goes into mass production, which is when a much bigger bit is used, which not only spins and moves faster, it is also programmed to mill away more material vertically. This process can sometimes be optimized by a factor of 5, meaning it only takes 20% of the time compared to the prototyping run. Remember when I mentioned boring parts of this process? Well, this is one of them. This fixture is used as a stabilization device for the aluminum case. Once the aluminum itself is cut from the inside, it becomes very unstable and fragile. So in order to cut it from around, from the outside to get its final shape, what we need to do is fix it with something. And this is the device we're gonna use to do so. So once we cut the inner aluminum, we're gonna put it on top of this, fixate it, and then cut the outside to get the final look of it. Also on the bottom of this device are four clamping pins, which are used to clamp this device onto the machine very fast. One more benefit of using fixtures is that you can have two of them. And once the machine is milling one piece, you can prepare a second one and just swap them when the machine is done working on the first one. Mounting and unmounting parts into the machine often takes a considerable amount of time and we want to optimize that as well. And finally, once the fixture is calibrated, we don't need to do it on any of the subsequent pieces. The machine already has all the necessary information to position its coordinate system correctly, so one more step of optimization done. Much like with milling the inner part, we're using a fairly small bit and carefully observe its movement and observe the stress on the monitor next to the machine. Interestingly, in our case, no pun intended, the most time consuming part of the outside milling is actually the ventilation holes. Since there are 1267 of them, the machine needs about 17 minutes to drill them all and unfortunately this part cannot be optimized as much as some other parts can be. The drill bit still needs to position itself above each hole, move down to drill it, then move back up and position itself above the next one. 1000 267 times, but it will look super cool.
All right, our cover is finally done. So let's talk about it first. Uh, I wanted a monolithic shape of the router itself because, well, I like monolithic shapes and the brand is called Mono. And second, the requirement was also that it shouldn't be higher than 44 millimeters, which is one U in height, because I want to be able to put it on a shelf in my server rack. So that's kind of the gist of it. And now let's put it together. All right, here it is, the Kaina final product. Uh, the Kaina comes from the fact that we have a lot of work to do still. This is just the enclosure, the case, but it's not done yet. First, we need to anodize it or coat it or protect it from the elements and get away with this stripes and make it look much nicer. Then what we need to do is have some feet made. Thirdly, as I mentioned before, we'll have some custom buttons made as well. And last but not least, we also need some lights in the front that will indicate hardware activity, power, network activity, and so on. And, of course, I will document every step of the journey. And once we're completely done, and this is a fully functioning, complete router, I will give it to one of the subscribers of this channel. So make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one.